uh, Jay Harwood with a very special edition, uh, edition of the Amazing Meds. I love my podcast. I want to welcome uh, uh, Ken McKenzie, an original Met, 1962, former coach at Yale University. Howard Johnson, a, a three-time 30-30 guy. And Billy Wagner, one of the top relievers in the history of baseball and hopefully should be in the Hall of Fame pretty soon. Ken, let me start with you if I can. How does it feel to be the answer to a trivia question? In 1962, the Mets won 40 games. You won an ace of their victories. You won five games. And the only pitcher in the 62 team with a winning record. How does it make you feel to be an answer to that trivia question? Well, take whatever you can get, Jay. <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good point. And he had a couple of saves too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Good for and, you. Yeah, that's great. You know, well, I threw wasn't a home run. Well, this is good. I, I faced some pretty good hitters. Yeah. I, I, faced, I faced Henry Aaron, Stan Musial, <laughs> and... Oh, Paul, what's the other guy's Willie name? Willie Mays. Willie Mays. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good yeah. lineup. Willie Mays is my idol growing up. I was a big Giant fan. You know, hey, Howard, Howard, let me ask you, when you yeah, come to yeah. the old-timers day game, you know, on August 27th, I should have, you know, we're, we're going to have the first old-timers day game since 94. How is it going to feel to put the Mets uniform on again? Oh, man, it's going to feel great. Uh when I was a kid, that's all I, I, used, I couldn't wait to put the uniform on. I couldn't wait. It was like a kind of a ritual almost, you know, you put on your socks and stuff. You got to make sure just everything's just right. And then the pants and jersey and everything. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to be like that, doing that again. And um, like I said earlier, it's going to be the, the interaction with not only the, the, the other players, ex-players that are there, but with the fans. And that's what's going to be cool about the whole scenario. Billy, you come from a small town of Virginia. I mean, you you were signed with the Mets in 06. I mean, did you have any trepidations about coming to New York at all? Absolutely. I am not uh, savvy. Uh, I, 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 I'm uh, a straight shooter, and, and that was my biggest fear is shooting it in, in what I thought my version would be, the straight. And so uh, – um, I didn't have any fear about playing playing baseball was that one thing I was good at. I didn't have to think it, it was, uh, everything outside of it, just, uh, preparing myself for, you know, things I hadn't been prepared for, uh, uh you know, constructive criticism, the, uh, crit whatever, I mean, you know, whatever you could get, it was just learning how to handle that. That was the trepidation for me coming to New York. I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I, when I signed in 06, and I told the Wilpons, I said, I'm coming to New York. I want to be in New York because if I want to go to the Hall of Fame, I've got to be able to be successful in one of the hardest places in the world to be successful. And I said, I'm going to come and I'm going to be I'm going to be the closer. And, uh, you know, really the monetary value really didn't have the big sticking point for me because the ultimate goal was to be successful, win a championship and, you know, make my name as being able to handle playing in the toughest place in the world. Cause the guy next door, I mean, was Mario Rivera, who's the greatest reliever we've ever had. So you got, I wasn't just competing with Mets fans. I was competing with the Yankee fans. So there was a lot of, lot of concern, but I knew the baseball was going to be the easiest part for me. But you know, I remember about you, you were very shy and reticent. You were like, didn't really take on many challenges. Like your theme song was Mr. Sandman, which was Rivera's song. And, and you got a lot of flack for taking that song. You remember that part of it? Oh yeah, I do. I, um, it was funny. I think it was comical at the time. Uh, you know, um, it, it was just one of those things. I mean, I, I think it just added a, a, a good little, it was never a jab or anything like that, but of course everybody wanted to make that feel that way. But, uh, you know, me and Mo, I, me and Mo laughed about it, you know, uh, it was kind of just a, you know, not a big deal, but it was, it was fun to have that conversation. I remember like uh, Metallica's uh, agent or somebody was 
like uh, a big Billy Wagner fan and the Metallica band itself was a big Mariano fan. So it was hilarious. One would say I had it first. The other one would say he had it first. So it was, it was just comical to listen to it and hear the, the, the fans, you know, when you went to Yankee Stadium or when you came to uh, these places, how they would talk. Hojo, oh, when you came over from the Tigers in, in 90, in, in 84, after the 84 season, mm-hmm. a lot of people said, you know, some of the reports in the papers, well, he's never going to make it in New York. Uh, he's not the kind of a player. Do you remember those press reports? Oh, yeah. But, but like everybody on here, you know, you get that everywhere you go at every level. It doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> even after, even after my first you know, really good season, 87. They said, oh, you'd never do it again. So you, you just, you, you learn how to deal with that stuff. And, you know, people are going to have their opinion about you one way or the other. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Um, I, I love what Billy said um, about, you know, playing baseball was the easy part. Well, sometimes baseball was, was hard for me, you know, not because I wasn't the, the most talented guy on the field, but, one thing I love to do is just to play hard. And that, and that's, that, that fit me with Met fans because I recognize that early on that they just want guys to leave it on the field. And I had no problem doing that. So even if I, even on my worst days, I let it, I let it out there. And I think that's what, that's what uh, was good about New York city and playing. How there. after the 86 season, uh, uh, Ray, does, Ray Knight does come back. Kevin Mitchell is traded. Yep. Did you kind of uh, like a sigh, like take a breath a little bit? Because after that 86 season, you know, three 30, 30 seasons, uh, 91, uh, 117 RBIs. No man has ever won the RBI title, 38 home runs, you know, 30 plus uh, uh, stolen bases. Did you say, okay, the job is mine now? Yeah, I mean, I, at that time, I let's see, 87. So I came up in 82. So I had a few years in me. I'd been to two World Series and uh, been around some great players. So I was confident in what a great player looked like, you know. And I, I studied those guys and talked to them and asked them questions. Because if, if you want to be good at something, be around somebody who's good at it, you know, and talk to them and find out why. And uh, I remember I talked to – when midnight hit, I think I was in my car. I was in Brooklyn with my wife. We were going down – coming back from somewhere. And – um, having dinner or whatever. And Lee Mazzilli called me and said, Hey, congratulations. You're, you're going to be the third baseman for the Mets. And then, um, I talked to Davey shortly after that. And he was like, Hey, it's your job and it's yours to lose, you know? So that's, that's all I needed, man. It's just to get my foot in the door, Jay. That's all I needed. Billy, let me jump around to, to you in, in, uh, you know, in, in 2006, you come, you get 40 saves in your first year here. You know, this, this, to me, that was one of – that 2016 was one of the best conglomeration of talents. Carlos Delgado, Carlos Beltran, David Wright, Jose Reyes, Paul LaDuca. We went 97 games that year and just fall a little bit short, you know, when uh, – again, when, when Molina hits the home run. Looking back in that year, I mean, were we ever on a team that had better talent than that team? Uh not offensively, I don't think. I mean, I mean, you had Baglon Biggio, uh, you know, Jim Tome. Uh, um, you had some guys, but I tell you, top to bottom in that lineup was not much fun to deal with. I mean, they could score in tremendous. I mean, they had speed, they had power, they had gaps, they had they just had a they had experience. Uh, I don't I don't know if I played with some a team that's been that just had all the pieces as. Um, as the Mets offensively. I mean, and we had, I, I tell you, you know, that season was, you know, to come up that short was probably the most frustrating, frustrating point of my career, uh, knowing that, um, you know, we, we didn't pull our load there at the end. I mean, you know, I tell you, the, the, probably the guy that was the biggest part of our team in the bullpen that probably doesn't get is Duane or Sanchez. Duane or Sanchez was probably the glue I, I, he had more moxie and more confidence than anybody I've ever played with. And when he walked onto that field in the seventh inning, eighth inning, sixth inning, had to get a big out, that dude did it. And he set the tone for our bullpen. I mean, you, you know, he, he, 
he knew how to get the ball to me and he made my life really easy a lot of times when I was in out there and I tell you uh when he went down no six I mean that was I tell you that was like you know taking a bullet out of our gun and I, I tell you if he's in that if he is there if he if he doesn't get hurt we win we win the world series no I, I agree Howard, let me ask you. I I I think I have the story messed up, but you still had Degrom early on in his career, and you kind of yeah, predicted yeah. what would happen. What are the circumstances with that, Howard? I just forget. I was coaching with Seattle in Triple A, um, to in Tacoma, and um, Degrom was on Vegas, and that was when Zach Wheeler was there, <clears throat> and there was some other pitching there, but. Um, and Wheeler was had good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I, I think the guy that I, as a hitting coach, you watch pitchers, and you get a sense of what they are on the mound. What what is a hitter seeing? Um, you'll see guys that, you know, hitters will come back and say, I'm I'm not picking the ball up, or, you know, different things like that. And and you so you watch deliveries and stuff, and you see how guys accomplish that deception. And what I saw in Wheeler was kind of a long arm release, kind of a late release. And the ball was like, he let the ball go way out front and just his delivery was to me, it looked like it was going to be problematic. And when I saw, so I saw him pitch and he pitched really well against us, but it never really got much, much say. And then that year at David's wedding out in California, I I ran into, um, the John Rico and and I think you were there too, Jay. Yes, and, sir. and I was telling Rico, I just said, "Hey, man, um, you know, I know there's a lot of information, a lot, a lot of talk about Wheeler this year and everything, but I think the best guy you got is is uh, Degrom, and I'd watch out for that guy. He's going to be in your rotation, and um, you know, things just kind of played out that way. I mean, he's got way better than I. I mean, no one's going to predict what he did now, but you could see it as a coach." And Billy could say the same thing. He watches hitters. He watches other pitchers, and he's trying to get get better from that. And so, you know, that that's what we do. You know, and I saw it. It was pretty clear. Billy, I know you're coaching in, in Charlottesville you, in High School. You enjoy coaching and any long range predictions. You want to go further, another level, or you're, you're just content to keep coaching high school? I, I love high school. I do. I think uh, in a lot of ways that's the ground roots of baseball. Uh um, it's my opportunity to help kids who are going through anxiety uh, of sports now. And, and it's my way to be able to help give back. Uh, I, I love coaching. I love kids. I love, I love their success. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I never liked having to deal with worrying about my success. And so my success is their success. If, the, if they're able to go on and do well, then, then, and grow, then that's the success I'm looking for. So I love, and my high school coach was a lot like that. I love, I love the opportunities to give kids a chance to learn. So, you know, for me, uh, I, you know, I may down the road uh, look into college, but to be honest with you, uh, I just, I, I love being able to give back to the young, younger uh, um, people and, and, and just make, and, you know, help, help them make better decisions. I like that. It's good. I like, I like what you're doing. That's good. I enjoy it. It's fun. Big need for it. Ken, talk about the characters you had on the team in 62. Uh, Marv Throneberry, Rod Keneal. You know, I, I, I joined the Mets in 1980. I always wanted to work for Casey Stengel. You think I would have liked Casey? How could you not? We, he's a good guy. Oh yeah, Casey. Casey knew where it was. Casey was last one to bed and first one up in the morning. I kind of identify with Casey because people always accuse me of falling asleep in meetings, you know. And I, well, they uh, always accuse Casey of falling asleep on the bench. Yeah, well. <laughs> I never saw Casey asleep on the bench. And, no. and well, I, people saw me sleeping in meetings, I can tell you that. You didn't either. 
I, I did. I did. But how about Marv Throneberry? Marv didn't appreciate what he had when he first had it. And Richie Ashburn had a locker room close to Marv. And Marv got pissed off because... <laughs> They, the sports writers were giving him a hard time about making errors and crazy plays and stuff. And Richie said to him one day, Marv, you don't understand what's going on here. They love you. You, you, uh, you leave them alone. Let them, let them have their day. And, and uh, Marv ended up being one of the one of the uh, heroes of the team because yeah, Marv, Marv missed first base, Marv missed second base, Marv missed third base. I was at that and game, uh, Marv. I was at that game. Should, yeah. And Marv thought he was Mickey Mantle. You know? Marv had shirts with with the two inch collars on them. And Marv uh, wore, wore his, uh, his hat like Mickey did. And uh, Marv ran with his elbows up like Mickey did. Thanks, Ken, I appreciate it. Howard, you always told me, uh, going back to 86, that okay. if Mookie didn't come through, you would have come through, right? That's right. Yeah, you were the. You <laughs> said you would have hit a home run that allows you to grab ball to first base, right? That's right, Jay. But I mean, no, seriously, you you were the on deck batter when Mookie was up. What was your bird's eye view of that of that at bat? I mean, I can't believe that Mookie didn't get hit by that wild pitch. I mean, that was I mean that Gedman. That's what got Gedman too. Because uh, it's just one of those things. But, you know, just seeing that ground ball, I mean, Pete was our grounds crew guy back in those days. I got in trouble once, Billy. I, I said, I said, man, our field is not very good. I remember I said, that. I, heard, oh, oh. I said, our field is the worst in the league. <laughs> right? And, oh, man, he was so mad. He was so mad at me the next day. He, he just he wanted to kill me right there. I said, hey, Pete, I'm sorry, man. I, I should not have said that. I, I apologize. And, uh, but it was true. I mean, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. So, so um, I've seen that same ground ball, Jay, take so many different hops by the time it got to an infielder. That thing was bouncing all over the place. If Today's game is on a pool table. These, these grass, infield, dirt, it's like smooth. There's no lip. There's no hard stuff. It's just like carpet. And, you know, back then, man, Shea was rough. And late in the game like that, forget about it. Oh. And I saw, I just saw, I just saw Buckner with those, uh, those uh, kind of experimental Nike high tops that he had had on. And he kind of came in and got, got caught on his heels, man. And I, I've seen that same ground ball at third base just eat me up. And it, sure enough, man, it went right by him. Almost like I, I swear, Jay. I, I almost like I could see it happening. I could see it happening right before it happened, and just good. I couldn't believe it, man. And and so that was my. I was, I was getting ready to hit. That, that was my view of it. Ser serious note. I mean, um, uh, last summer your grandson Tanner had a serious accident, yeah. lost some toes on his left foot, and you know your teammates uh, Daryl came down to be with you, Roger McDowell, name a few. Uh, came to your, your, your aid, and uh, he's doing better now. I know it's one of the things about the old Timers Day game. You're going to be – he's going to see you play. And you, 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 he, he'll know you did play. You know, not that you're making the plays or anything, right? That's right. He'll know <laughs> for, for a fact at that point. But, yeah, Jay, I mean, you know, I can't say enough about my teammates and friends and, and guys that weren't even my teammates, but, you know, that we, we share so much with the Mets – um, they just were there, you know, whether it was a word of encouragement or prayer, um, financial, then all that stuff. And, um, you know, it, it, it got us through a very, very difficult time 
but now, now, I mean, Tanner is doing so much better. He's like a normal little kid at this point. He's two and a half. All he wants to do is hit. He just wants to play baseball. It's amazing. He'll hit, hit B- Billy, this, this little kid will go into a cage and hit for two hours straight by himself. Just put the ball That's- on the team, go to hit, and just do it for, for hours. And I sent Jay some videos of him. It was just, it just kind of, it just, it's That's cool awesome. to see it. Yeah, it was That's such really a cool. such a difficult time back then to yeah, think where yeah, really we yeah. were to where, where we are now, Remarkably Jay. You know? Hey, 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 Billy. You know, I remember all your saves, but what I remember most about you is you never backed off when you blew a save or, or had a loss. You were always by your locker. But do you remember the radio show you did, and then? It got to the point when we were, might have been losing or whatever, and they never asked you about yourself. Is why did the manager make this decision? I mean, you never backed off. You stood right up, and after a game, I always count on Billy Wagner being by his locker. Yeah, now I can't get a New York boat to get in the Hall of Fame. Thank God. Well, <laughs> I could be that guy. So <laughs> but you were really a stand-up guy, Billy. You really were, and made my job a lot easier. But you know, you, you never held back on that radio show either. I remember, right? Oh my gosh! It, wasn't that what Michael K? Yeah, I think it was. Oh my yeah. gosh! I mean, you talking about the greatest setup artist ever? I mean, <laughs> he he would butcher me. He could absolutely crush me, and he, I think he loved that. He loved. He couldn't wait for my mouth to open. He could, oh he man! Could spin, he could spin everything. I I that was the one thing I was not ready for when I got to new york holy gosh everybody's like hey you need to do this you need to do that make a couple bucks do this get your name out there holy god i wish i'd lived in a hole i got it was, crushed it wasn't worth it huh bill no <laughs> oh, well you know what you always took care of me the problem was yeah. i couldn't take care of myself because i wasn't one to sit there and i, I was a straight shooter you can't be a straight shooter and, and because people wow. don't like that. They like it when it suits them, but they don't like it when it hurts them. And and I just right. just was not a, a good fit for me. Billy, really, well, I got you. Um, 50, 46 to 51 percent to Hall of Fame. You never been an I I I guy, but I mean, you're trending in the right direction. Three more shots left. What would it mean to you to be in Cooperstown one day? Well, I think it's a you know it's an an honor that I think you can't put words to. Uh, I think when you look back and you're in that Hall of Fame, you look back at the guys that helped you get there. I think you can't get to the Hall of Fame without guys making them dive and play or, you know, uh, getting that call or getting that, getting that extra hit or to get you in the game or, um, you know, just to set up men alone, putting you in a situation to be successful. And, I mean, um, I, th- I think, you know, that would – if I ever get in, you know, it's a, it's a team – situation for me that I think of all the guys that allowed me the the Brad Lidges, the Octavio Dotels, the uh the Peter Morlands, the uh Sean Weisses, the Duaner Sanchez's. Uh, uh there's just so many guys that helped me get to where I'm at and to give the opportunity. I don't think I could sit there and really feel like it's really about me because uh those guys were tremendous and you know I'm just fortunate that I got the, the credit at, at the back end. Okay. Well, well said, said, man. Well said. Yeah. Hey, Ken, can I ask you one last question? You know, your 62 team lost 120 games. Still, most fans still adore that team. What, what, how do you feel? Are you feel proud to be part of the team 50 years later? No, it's more than that. You know, 60 years later, people still adore that team. What did it mean to you to be part of that team? Yeah, well, Jay, my license plate on my car is 62 Met. And if I wasn't proud of the fact that I was a 62 Met, I wouldn't have that license plate. Well, did, did you, well, what, 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 no, I agree with you. Would you, you played with Gil Hodges for a while. What's your feelings about Gil being inducted into the Hall of Fame? Oh, well, of course. Uh, Hot Rod Keneal and I were playing bridge one Sunday morning. Bridge. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cribbage to us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And oh, my Gil, gosh. 
and uh, oh, I'll think of his name in a minute. Looks like Mick guys were smarter back then. Who? <laughs> yeah, Duke Snyder. Duke Snyder. Duke, Duke of Blackwich. And uh, oh, no, it's unreal. And I started to laugh. And I said, Hot Rod, what are you laughing about? He said, Mackenzie, look around. What do you see? <laughs> Here you and I are playing against Duke Snyder <laughs> and Gil Hodges. What's wrong with that? <laughs> 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 Only Hot Rod could see, could see something like something funny like that. That's yeah. great, great stories. Yeah. Guys, I appreciate your time. Uh, I would never say that Hot Rod and I beat Gil and... and uh, Were you a good bridge player, Ken? <laughs> I, I played okay. It wasn't great. I would have been a relief pitcher. You would have been. Well, guys, I appreciate your time. August 27th. Right now, we have about 50 guys uh, coming back, which is great. And you, this call really represents the game. We have, you know, Ken represents the 60s, Hojo the 90s, you know, and Billy the 2000s. We're going to have guys there from all the, all the decades. It should be great. We haven't done this in, you know, uh, almost 28, 29 years. So I hope the fans come out, and it should be a nice, uh, nice day and a lot of good memories. And I appreciate everybody's time. So... You know, I'll hold you up, Billy, Ken. Thank you for your time. Stay healthy, and we'll see you in a couple of months. Hey, great to see you guys, Hojo. Okay. Good to see you always. Good to see you too, man. Good to see you, Billy. Yeah, Thanks. I can't Thanks. wait to see you guys in a couple of months. Thanks, Jake. Thank you, guys. Appreciate see your you time, can. everybody.